All right, let's get into it. Let's get into the details and some of the specifics about uh, chassis build. So we got two weekends in on this chassis and um, what we got so far and we'll talk about um, we'll talk about a little bit specifics but in general what this is going to be is the race version of the chassis uh, a 4800 car style build and uh, what we are uh, trying to accomplish with this is is either a chassis that's going to go on the track itself and race or be more of a pre-runner. It depends on uh, where this chassis ends up. If I end up keeping the chassis, uh, I'll probably build it into a pre-runner. I don't really have any intention on racing, but I'm never going to say never. Um, but really what I'd like to do with this chassis is I'd like to build it into a roller and then try to sell it. What that does for me is it gives me a little bit of cash to go ahead and start another chassis and keep investing in parts so I can completely build a pre-runner myself without having to come out of ex uh, come out of the pocket with all the expenses. So anyway, enough of that. Uh, we got two versions of the chassis. I sell a trail version, I sell a race version. The race version is a little bit narrower. Um, it also offers for more bump or up travel here in the front. Um, why do you need more bump? Why do you need more up travel? Well, you need more up travel and you need more bump for going fast. Um, with that being said, and we'll get more into that later on as the chassis progresses and you can see a little bit more of what I'm talking about. But anyway, with that being said, with more bump and more up travel, there are compromises. These lower frame rails will go up higher, which means if you can imagine the hood line here, it starts to pinch in and get narrower and narrower toward the front. So what, the, what does that mean? Well, that means no front radiator. Very, 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 I'm not saying you can't do it, but, I, but, I, but I'm gonna tell you, this chassis will be designed to run the radiator behind the seats or in the back. And that's why you see a lot of race cars are built like that because there's no room here or there's no height here in the hood between this lower frame rail and the hood line to put a radiator. Now you can put a radiator in there, but it's got to be leaned so far back that it's almost horizontal. Um, and is that efficient for cooling? No, probably not. Especially because you need a larger radiator because most race cars are running big high horsepower uh, engines. So that's that. Let's go, let's talk about the subframe. So subframe is the very foundation of any chassis. Um, some people probably call it something different. I don't know. I call it the subframe. And the subframe on this, and I should probably say this, the majority of the chassis, 99.9% .9 of the chassis is built out of inch and three quarter DOM tubing. Um, inch and three quarter being the outside diameter of the tubing. And uh, there's a few tubes on this chassis that are going to be inch and a half in diameter but very few, uh, just basically the window bars. These bars right here are inch and a half. There's not really gonna be much else as far as the base structure of the chassis that are gonna be built out of an uh, inch and a half. Everything is inch and three quarter. Everything is DOM tubing. What does DOM tubing mean? DOM stands for drawn over mandrel. There are two types of tubing out there that you'll find. 
there's DOM tubing. And tubing, I should probably say this, tubing is called tubing and not pipe because tubing is identified by the outside diameter of the material, okay? Pipe is generally identified by the inside diameter or the ID of the, tube, of, of the material. So tubing, outside diameter. Two types of tubing that you'll find out there. DOM, drawn over mandrel. The other type is REW or HREW. What is that? Well, HREW has a welded seam, HERU. A lot of people call it HERU. A welded seam. Will that work for this application? Yes, it will work for this application. Would I use it for this application? No, absolutely not. Because that tubing has a welded seam in it, which inherently makes it a weaker material. Um, do we want a weaker material in a chassis? No, we don't. Especially because not only is the chassis the foundation for the build on a car, the chassis is our roll cage. Do we want a, re a weaker roll cage? No, we don't. We don't want any chance for that seam on tubing to fail in a crash or a rollover or anything else. So we always use DOM. DOM stands for drawn over mandrel. There is not any seam in this material. What they do is they extrude the material over a mandrel. Material's hot. I'm sure you can find a video on YouTube on how this stuff is made, the manufacturing process. But there is no, there's no seam on this tubing. So that's, uh, that's a must. Must have DOM tubing, in my opinion. There's some guys that build Hero. Back in the day, they build chassis out of Hero because DOM was not readily available. Okay, we can get into the weeds about that and have a discussion and debate, but I, I don't even want to have a debate. Let's just say that. We're not having a debate. We want DOM tubing. Okay, so let's go back to the subframe. The subframe is going to be this part that looks like, you know, the sleigh piece right here, and then these cross pieces right here. That's your subframe. That's your very, very foundation of the build. Here's another subframe I built at the same time when I had the other one jigged up in the chassis. So that's going to be for the next chassis after, after I get done with this somewhere down the line. At my rate, at the rate I'm going, it's been one chassis a year. So who knows whenever I get to that. But the subframe, inch and three quarter OD, however, the wall thickness on it is 188 wall, okay? 188 wall is, uh, is thicker. It's about 3 16 wall thickness on the tubing. Everything else on the chassis is 120 wall, just about everything else. Um, the reason being is uh, this is the lowest part on your chassis, okay? The lowest part on your chassis is, has the most chance of being in, in contact with rocks. So can you build the subframe out of 120 wall tubing, the thinner tubing? Yeah, you can. And are we limited to inch and three quarter diameter tubing? No, we're not. You can build it out of two inch diameter. You can build it out of inch and a half diameter. Some of your comp competition crawlers you see out there, they have smaller diameter tubing. And why do they have smaller diameter tubing? Because overall, that car is gonna be way lighter. Your competition crawlers are way simple, very simplistic compared to a race car or even a trail buggy. So going back to the uh, subframe, I want all my subframes to be made out at 188 wall. And the reason being is because not only is it the lowest point on your chassis and it's gonna see more contact with rocks, um, but my lower links are gonna mount off of these cross tubes here. So my link tabs are gonna be at least 188 wall uh, or 188 wall uh, material. What am I saying? 3 16 188 wall, 3 16 same thing. So my link tabs right here that are gonna come off these cross pieces, they're gonna be made out of 3 16 plate. 
I'm welding 3 16 plate to 3 16 wall tubing, okay? Everything's gonna be braced and gusseted, so. But even more so, 188, 188 wall, thicker wall thickness, is uh, stronger, okay? Obviously. These tubes right here are going to come in contact with rocks. And I've seen several chassis where these tubes on the subframe are collapsed because it impacts with rocks. So we want to put our best foot forward, use 188 wall. So there's your subframe. I guess that's enough detail about subframes. On top of the subframe, the next tube what we have is, the next tube we have is our main frame rail. This is our main frame rail. This is the front. This is the rear. Um, the reason why we have these S-bends in it is for suspension travel. If you can imagine right here, you're going to have your shock or your shock, not your shock. What am I saying? Your axle. You're going to have your axle. On a race car like this, we want to have equal amounts of travel. In other words, we want to have a, a shock that has a 50-50 travel ratio. We want to be able to go up 50%, down 50%. The reason we want that is because we're going to be trying to go faster through the desert. We want to be able to soak up the bumps. And uh, these frame rails right here need to be higher. They've got to be higher so that we can allow that um, axle to travel upward and uh, have more bump in the suspension travel. So back to the frame rails, we're going we're gonna to focus on this right here. There's a seam, okay? Any kind of seam in a chassis like this in the tubing, and what we're talking about here is a butt seam, okay? Do we just butt these two tubes together and weld them? Well, yeah, we do, but not without putting an internal sleeve in here. I have an internal sleeve that goes four inches this way, four inches that way. And that's the minimum, if you can get it in there, with a straight section in the tubing. Not only do I have that internal sleeve in there, which is made out of inch and a half OD tubing, but I also have, and I can't, I don't know if you can see them. Oh, you can see them over here. I also have holes drilled for plug welds. So this seam is going to be welded around the butt or the perimeter. And then these holes, holes here are going to be plug welded. Very, very strong. Okay. Any chassis, whether it's a roll cage or chassis, if there's a joint, you need to have that internal sleeve in there. I've seen some people that build them without that internal sleeve and that's crazy because it's not safe. It's not safe. Here on the front end of the chassis is going to be the same thing. There's going to be a tube that extends out, bends up, goes to the stinger of the nose on the chassis. Well, here's another, another joint. You can see how I prep my joint. Everything's beveled back. So when I weld that butt weld, my weld's going to lay in there real nice. And then we already have our holes drilled for our plug welds for the seam or for the sleeve. So um, from there, this tubing here, I should, I should mention on the, on the frame rail is 120 wall thickness. Subframe, 188, 188 wall thickness. You have some of your basic stuff for structure. You have your uh, uprights here that are coming off the subframe that are going to support the, um, the frame rail through here. And even more importantly, this back one is going to support this seam on the main frame rail. So you have this upright coming up here and you have a node here that makes a node because you've got your cross piece here on the subframe, you got the upright here, you got a joint there. And that makes a node. We got tubing all coming together there. Then you have it coming up and supporting this. Get my hand out of there so it focus. Um, <clears throat> tubing coming up to support that seam. 
Do you have to have tubing to support the seam? No, you don't. Because you put that sleeve in there, it's plenty strong. But why not? Why not have that there? I need to have that up right there anyway, so why not have it right there where that seam is? So that seam is not only going to be supported by this upright, but it's going to be supported by this outrigger tube. Okay, these outrigger tubes all come out here, they slide out here, and uh, they're going to support what I would call this tube, which is the rocker rail. The rocker rail on this chassis is also 188 wall. Why? Well, because the heavier wall thickness, because this also is going to be a point of contact with some rocks on some of your gnarlier trails, you're going to be uh, hitting this tube. And this tube sort of acts like a slider. I know you guys, some of you guys know what sliders are. On some of your big body vehicles, you have sliders. So it sends, if you, if you come up on an obstacle, it, it sends the vehicle away from the obstacle. It slides off the rock um, rather than damaging your rocker rail or your door seam or whatever you want to call it on uh, a regular opening and closing door type, uh, opening and closing uh, door type vehicle. So um, on a trail chassis, I would probably make this just 120 wall and it'd be perfectly fine. But because this is a race chassis, we're just gonna, you know, make it a little bit stronger. 188 wall, if this chassis ends up being my own personal uh, a car, I'll probably still put Nerf bars on here. And the Nerf bars are just gonna be sacrificial pieces of tube that will um, basically act as well as a slider. Um, I've got them on my buggy right here. Um, this uh, rocker tube is all 120 wall on this buggy. Nerf bar on here, I've already gone through a set. This is my second set and you can probably see I use them. I reinforce them with some 3 16 plate on this side too. So these are going to last quite a bit longer than the first set. The first set was only made out of an inch and a half and uh, I banged them up pretty good. So um, that's where we're at. That's where we're at so far on this uh, build. This is two weeks on this chassis. Um, there are uh, more adjustments that I need to make before I weld in or tack in. Everything's gonna be tacked, it's not fully welded. Tack in um, these outrigger tubes. Um, need to make a few more adjustments to get these seams um, or these joints just right the way I want them. Um, then tack weld in these uprights, outrigger tubes. Subframe's already tack welded. Um, I guess uh, that probably covers it for the first video. It's already running long, but uh, I wanna talk in detail about this as much as I can, and that's what the purpose of this is. Um, I guess one more thing we should probably talk about. Tube prep. Um, here's an example of tube prep. Well, Maybe. Okay. All your ends that you cope, or I guess you cope with a, two, with a by hand, whether you cope them by hand with a grinder, you cope them with a notcher, um, they need to be beveled. You need to bevel this and clean up this tube. You need to have a place for this weld to lay into. Um, make sure you bevel these tubes so that you have a nice clean area for your weld to lay into. That bevel is just like any prep work on a plate that you're getting ready to weld. You bevel a plate before you do a butt seam on plate. You bevel a plate before you do a, a, a T-joint, whatever. So all these tubes will get cleaned up. I'll run a sander over them or a flap disc and uh, everything's gonna get cleaned up before it gets tacked in there. And then it will, it'll be prepped and ready when I go to fully weld and finish weld everything. So anyway, that is, uh, that's it for video number one. Like, subscribe, share, leave comments down below. I'll try to answer them if you got any questions. Um, make sure you get on the website, buy a shirt, 
buy a hoodie, buy a hat, uh, support the channel, uh, support the website. All right. Thanks for watching.